Why does the Boeing 747 have a hump? Most of you already know the short answer to this, but there might be some historic details you were unaware of. The Boeing 747 was first designed back in the 1960s as a large successor to the Boeing 707. Air traffic was picking up and the airports were getting busy putting pressure on operators. Airlines were starting to nudge airframe builders for bigger aircraft that could fly further and relieve congestion at busy airports. Boeing was already designing the new smaller 707 concept, dubbed the Boeing 737, and shifting some team members away to work on this new concept. Because of the bespoke nature of the idea, Boeing brought on future launch customer Pan Am to go over its requirements. Alas, at the same time that the Boeing 747 was on the drawing board, engineers at Boeing were obsessed with a race to build the first American Concorde. They didn't see the Boeing 747 as the future of passenger transport, but rather as a cargo plane. Because of this, efforts were focused on the supersonic Boeing 2707. Sharing this sentiment was Pan Am CEO Juan Tripper in 1966. Tripper wanted the option to turn the passenger Boeing 747 into a cargo plane if his risky order of 25 aircraft proved to be a step in the wrong direction. To future-proof the design and conversion into a cargo aircraft, it required the aircraft nose to lift. If the 747 cockpit were in the nose like the 707 or 737, this would mean all the controls, electronics and avionics would need to pass through the hinge point. The joint would be needlessly complicated and would skyrocket the price. Hence, the engineers went for a second deck that housed the cockpit in the Boeing 747-100. Because of aerodynamics, the cockpit level had to rise and slope back down to the main fuselage, giving us the iconic hump. Additionally, this design was left over from an earlier proposal by Boeing for a military transport aircraft in 1963. The US Air Force required a four-engined super transporter that had an opening nose to transport goods and invited Boeing and others to come up with ideas. Ultimately, the military selected the Lockheed design, but Boeing was still able to put this design to use with the 747. In future versions of the Boeing 747, the design of the upper deck would stretch to include first-class seats and onboard lounge. Future concepts might have included the hump to run the length of the aircraft, like the Airbus A380, but that's a tale for another video. Have you ever been to the upper deck of a Boeing 747? Let us know in the comments below. Did you know that we publish over 175 stories every single week on simpleflying.com? Be sure to check the link in the description for more great stories just like this. Thanks for watching, and be sure to like and subscribe before you go.